This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is on the VEI scale. It's part of the Volcanology playlist. And the VEI scale, it's a relative scale to assess or identify the different levels of eruptions, the intensity, the volume, and that usually relates closely to the amount of damage, the amount of hazards that are associated with each type of eruption and it links up nicely with our other content like our magma or lava characteristics, our volcano types, our eruption types, and different locations. So this video is going to look at how the VEI scale was created, and why it was created, and looking at the different levels and different examples. All right, so what is the VEI scale? So the VEI scale, the V stands for volcanic. The E stands for explosivity. And the I stands for index. So this is a relative scale. It's basically scientists dividing up the eruptions and looking at certain characteristics of the eruptions to divide them into obviously a scale and the scale goes from zero to eight zero being basically non-explosive and eight being extremely explosive in some cases this could be a world changing event now in terms of frequency like most scales with earthquakes and other uh, relative scales there is a lot more zero to one and one to two and the smaller eruptions, there's way more frequency and frequent eruptions, whereas an eight could be one every 1,000 years or even longer. To see a large eruption that goes towards the six or seven on the VEI scale can be very like once in a lifetime. So different characteristics that it's based on is the plume height, the intensity of the eruption, the magnitude and in terms of the pyroclastic material that could be in the obviously the plume and the ash cloud and the tephra to the deposits to the various features but you're classifying this eruption based on certain characteristics now this is a logarithmic scale now this is very important because as we know with other scales that are logarithmic we have to appreciate the difference in size when you jump from example you go from a one on a vei scale which is relatively small and more explosive or a small explosion to a three on the vei scale it's not just two larger it is going to be 100 times larger because every time you go from one to two, that would be a 10 times larger jump. Then a two to three would be another 10 times. So all you're going to do is times that together, so it's 100 times larger than the original VEI one. So these volcanoes that have a VEI of seven or eight are absolutely humongous and have a great effect on the immediate area and potentially the world as a whole. So when was this developed? Now, this is actually a recent development, so early 1980s, that scientists really started to produce a, a list of these eruptions and wanted to classify them in a way that made sense and a way that they could predict on similar types of volcanoes and different timescales the potential for another future eruption and maybe the size of that eruption so to help the surrounding area the people that live in the area and to help governments create better evacuation plans and emergency plans obviously a lot happened after mount st helens now mount st helens erupted in 1980 it was on the USGS's doorstep up in the American Northwest where you had the Cascade Mountain Range and you have a lot of active volcanoes through subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate under the North American Plate. So the beautiful line of volcanoes that are all active from Northern California up into Washington State and Mount St. Helens being one of those 
rather large uh, volcanoes erupted in 1980 with a VEI scale 5. And it was a lateral blast and landslide and earthquakes. It was an amazing thing. Unfortunately, people died. Uh, that was 57 people died, unfortunately, with that eruption. However, the good part that came out of the eruption, besides obviously the bad stuff, was the ability for the scientists and volcanologists in the USGS to drastically increase their knowledge of eruptions. The data they took, the samples they took, the videos and information and all the scientific data they collected from the eruption really progressed the science of volcanology and allowed scientists to discover more about what happened under the ground and how it erupts and the after effects of the eruption. This scale was created by two gentlemen, Chris Newell and Stephen Self. This is in a paper published in 1982 and has been used ever since. And this is from the University of Hawaii. It's been a great way to classify these eruptions, even looking back into historical eruptions like a Vesuvius or a Krakatoa or a Tambora and seeing their relative size based on the new scale. So when you measure with the VEI scale, obviously it's great to relate other things to each scale number. So the VEI zero, we're looking at different, or all through from zero to eight, we're looking at different characteristics of that eruption. This is how it gets its VEI number. So the ejector volume, that basically is the amount of material that is ejected from that volcano during that eruption. Now that could be a series of stages within one eruption, but generally it's going to be one eruption, but it could change in, the, in how long it takes to complete that one eruption. Basically, is it explosive? We've gone from zero to eight, the different levels of explosivity, and then the corresponding plume or ash cloud, which is very obviously linked to the ejector volume. The larger the volume, the larger the ash cloud. It's kind of common sense. And then the frequency, how, how often these volcanoes at the different VEI levels would erupt, and the eruption type. So the different types of eruptions are linked to the, or they have a certain VEI number associated with those types of eruptions. VEI zero. Now we can type in and add in these, these uh, details. Less than 0 0.00001 square kilometers. So this amount of volume is very small, and this would be obviously non-explosive, very, uh, what's called effusive, which basically is all this gas comes out really, and it's not really a large ash cloud. There's not really an eruption, just lava's gonna spew out basically. So the ash cloud will be you know, 0 0.1 kilometers up in the air. So 100 meters or less. Um, so very small ash cloud, if any. And these are pretty frequent. They kind of, um, are, I'm gonna put often, because consistent is a weird word, but often, it happens often. Some volcanoes are always erupting, some, are now and again, some are like once a week. Depends where you are, like Iceland versus Hawaii versus Mount Etna. And then eruption type, this is a Hawaiian. Hawaiian type of eruption, and that will correspond to the type of lava, the type of volcano, which is shield, and the type of magma and lava, which is very, very runny and low viscosity and low silica. Then, obviously, we're gonna go up and look at the one to three range. So now as you can see, as you go through from one to two to three, it's gonna be a hundred times more explosive than, than one, getting more uh, effusive to general, more explosive. So three is more severe and you're getting a lot more volume of ejector coming out. This corresponds to a much larger plume and ash cloud. Uh, VEI three is looking at 15 kilometers potentially of ejected material going into the uh, atmosphere so this goes into the troposphere and at 15 kilometers at some locations can actually enter the stratosphere and have more potential damage from that these the frequency is going to obviously increase the higher the viscosity the higher the vei the less frequent so vei3 is in a matter of months whereas vei1 would be daily occurrence of, of an eruption and then the type of volcano eruption 
would be Stromboli in his VEI-1, which is Deadly Occurrence, based on Mount Stromboli in Italy, where it was like the lighthouse of the Mediterranean. It was always erupting at night, you could see it from miles and miles around. Then Volcanian VEI-2, which is more of a larger ash cloud, more of a larger eruption, more explosive. And then Palayan, based on Mount Pele in Martinique, in the uh, West Indies and the Caribbean, uh, looking at a much more explosive, severe, you know, this one killed 25,000 people and, and um, wiped out the capital city uh, on that island and produced a very large eruption. So now we're getting to VEI 4 and 5. Now 4 and 5, you're looking at more larger eruptions, a lot more dangerous and a lot more explosive. So we've got ex exponentially more ejector volume from these uh, 4 and 5 VEI volcanic eruptions very large events and VI5 is cataclysmic for the people around the volcano itself. Looking at a much larger ash cloud and plume looking at pushing into the stratosphere for, for sure and uh, looking at the jet streams uh, up to 25 kilometers in uh, altitude. And then frequency, looking at uh, once every year or so for VEI-4, which is still a, a very, you know, for a large eruption, let's say around the Ring of Fire, that's that's pretty scary that every year a large VEI-4 is going to happen or occur on average. And then every 10 years is a VEI-5. Now, VI, so VEI-4 and 5, now we can look at different examples of eruptions. So Mount Pele was an actual VEI-4. And it was a Palaean stroke Plinian eruption. And VI5 was both Mount St. Helens in 1980 in Washington State in the US, and also Mount Vesuvius in Italy in 1879. So these two are very famous, very large, different characteristics of eruptions, but obviously a very, uh, very large eruptions and examples of. So now we're into the VI scale. We're looking at the very large, the big, big eruptions that are historic and have the potential to change or have changed the world and even uh, human society throughout history. So VEI-6, looking at over uh, 10 cubic kilometers of material ejected from that uh, volcano during the eruption, which is explosive, which is very, very bad, very large explosion, and you shouldn't be anywhere near it when it goes off. And then it's gonna create a plume or ash cloud that's over 30 kilometers, that's uh, around 20 miles in the air and that's going to be definitely in the stratosphere and cause a lot of tephra deposits and issues with weather and radiation and climate and, and issues with vegetation and crops, agriculture, acid rain. This happens every uh, one every hundred years so that's still scary. A hundred years or every hundred years there'll be a very large eruption uh, that can change an area or kill a lot of people and this would be a Plinian eruption type. Plinian comes from Pliny, Pliny the Younger, who was witness to Mount Vesuvius and the eruption that destroyed Herculaneum and Pompeii in 1879. He was able to document the eruption and the features that were associated with this scale and this size of eruption. And so we classically call it a Plinian eruption, which is the largest. Then if anything larger, like a VEI-7, we call it an ultra Plinian, and obviously an eight would be the same, but we call this a super volcano based on just the size and just the immense power and energy of these of these natural disasters. So VEI-7 is a hundred cubic kilometers of, of material ejected. It's extremely bad and over 40 kilometers in the air. And this happens every thousand years, which is still scary. And then we have examples of Mount Tambora in 1815 was uh, a VI-7, VI-6 looking at Krakatoa in 1883, and more recently Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, which was in 1991. And VI-8 is just the worst. It is going to be world changing, world event. It's going to happen every 10,000 years or so on average. It's going to create a massive ash cloud of over 50 kilometers or 30 miles, which would equate to over a thousand, a thousand cubic kilometers of ejected material. And this would be just extremely explosive, very deadly, very dangerous. And we call this an ultra Plinian or a super volcano. And the most famous one or famous ones that we know is the Toba eruption of 74,000 years ago and also 
Yellowstone, a bit further back in the past. That was at 640,000 years. Now, Yellowstone is a continental hotspot and plume which has had multiple eruptions in its history on its journey across the North American plate. Um, and the most recent VEI 8 eruption was in New Zealand. It was uh, a volcano called or uh, caldera called Urianvi, Urianvi, and it formed Lake uh, Taupu or Tupu. And this happened 26,000 years ago. That's the most recent VEI 8. So we can classify these volcanoes, these eruptions, based on these characteristics and look at the both primary and secondary hazards that come with a larger eruption above a VEI 4 up to an 8. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.